I'm great. What about you? <laughs> I'm good. Uh, but, 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 so I was wondering why do people refer to you yes. as the Kenyan Lucky Dube? Kenyan Lucky Dube. I told the people refer to me as what? Uh, it's because I, I, I feel like uh Ule Jamali manager for your continent in Lucky Dube. As in Ukiangalia yeah. ile ile ranking ya reggae at least in my opinion mm -hmm. in Africa we have so few guys who may achieve your excellence so to say me, if you want to be something yeah. in this continent you have to aspire to be the best and like you do for me is a guy okay like you do so you want to follow in his footsteps If if, if Lucky Dube was around in 2020, I'd like I'd like yeah? okay. I'd like okay, him I to see. be doing what I am so doing now. So kindly tell us a bit about yourself, other than you being the Kenyan Lucky Dube. Tell our fans yeah, what your name yeah. is, your full Kenyan names, what? and um, what music you do, and how the journey has been so far for you. All right. So my my actual name is Murua. Actually, mm -hmm. that's my name. That's my legal name. So my name is guys, yeah, my dear Papa George. <laughs> Sorry, Papa to kona to kona squad in Ajibamba Papa. So the first question. Mm -hmm. So my, my my legal name is actually Murua. I'm I'm Stephen uh, Murua. So when the time came to to look for a name, I think it was uh, it was a bit easy. Upon kona zivigumu sana kujaza na jina yangu ya ID. So yeah. music. That's just good music. And so that's, initially and that's what I you are not to. doing music. You are directing, right? Right? Hello. Hello. You are appealing to me, Peter. I'm saying, how you are doing music? Initially, you are doing film directing, right? My goodness, that oh, is terrible. All <laughs> speaker, please. I'm saying. Me, Peter? Initially, you were not doing music, so I just want to know how you ended up doing music from directing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. No, the the thing is, um, initially I was more of a of an artist in terms of the stage performance. So that was like when I was in uh, in uh, college, in the little after. So for yeah. close to 10 years, I was actually on the stage. I, I performed for a long time with uh, the Phoenix players, where I started out as an actor. I acted with a bunch of guys who uh, transitioned into TV now. Then from acting, I became a stage director. Again, at the Phoenix players, I mm -hmm. set up my own theater company. So we, we ran that for like a year or two. Then after that, that's when I got out of the arts. So that is the journey. For me, I used to do the, the theater arts, but at the same time, I also used to do uh, yeah. music. We had an a cappella group back in the day. And um, I would say that is where I started my artistic thing. So a few years back, when I wanted to come back into the entertainment, uh, I was trying to look at something which I could do as a creative outlet. I love to at least as we manage within my timing. So Stage performance and theatre is so demanding in terms of time, and a lot of uh, of these requirements are not uh, are not within your control. That's why I chose to do music, and uh, yeah. I, I've been doing that for the last. Uh, you dropped three your years. first song in 2017. Where? Home. Okay, sir. Hello. Yeah, you dropped your first yes, song in 2017 you. called Home. That really puts you on the map. How has that journey been since that time until now? What have you achieved in the last three years? Okay, 
Okay, the journey has been interesting. You know, um, first of all, when you when you get into something that's a bit new, of course you have to face some headaches in terms of uh, of uh, adapting. Goodness, Joe, I will eat you. Zima, you okay too? Sorry, guys. Yeah. So uh, the the typical challenges you have is uh, you know you're dealing with a new environment, you're dealing with new dynamics. You, you're trying to figure out how to, you know, first of all, create the music, who are the good producers, who are the good uh, video directors. You're trying to figure out how to market and promote your music. So I think it was a, it was a bit of a learning curve. But uh, I think so far I'm doing well. If, if you look at uh, where I started to where I am now, I've put out a number of uh, good releases. Uh, I, I would say my reach and visibility is growing. Last song I did uh, in February right now has uh, topped over a quarter million views, which for me is huge. So we are growing, and I think uh, my musical journey is growing quite well. So I think so far, I'm doing very well. Okay. And um, during this time that um, we have the corona menace, so many people have been affected. And um, the people who are also taking it hard are artists. How has it affected you as an artist? Well, I think it's an interesting time for artists. Um, for the bulk of those who actually make uh, a living 100% from doing the, the entertainment. Of course, you can imagine how hard it is for you to, to earn that shilling when you cannot go and earn it. Unanielewa, as in itabidu toke kwako, uende mahali, upafum shofa, nyibitu kama hizo. And that is where you're, you're literally earning your living. So I think in one way it has become a, a big challenge. Uh, like I've said, I do this part-time, not full-time. So w w what I'm seeing for, for the other artists who I'd say are trying to be more creative about how they're earning, uh, I am seeing a lot of guys are going up there, you know, you're doing your shows, you're doing your 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 DJ sets live, putting your impressor there, and, and I'll really ap appeal to everyone. If you see your favorite artist or your favorite DJ doing that, um, support where you can. But for, for, for us, I think uh, for those of us who take that more as uh, one of the things that we do, uh, I'd say I, I'm actually thankful that it is something I balance with other things. I am involved in other, in other income streams, so when this one is not working, we are doing the other things that just keep the boat going. Um, as an artist, for me, what I've done, I've taken this as a time of planning, a time of, re of reflection. I am working on more recordings, and I think that is where my focus is because it's been a bit of a challenge to either progress the, the vocal recordings or do the videos. So for me, it's a time for reflection and planning and creating new content, and that's what I'm doing. Was there something you were planning to release in the course of um, the two months that um, people have been really affected, or maybe in the next month? Actually, yeah. The <laughs> I have been doing a bunch of recordings, and we were supposed to be doing some music videos, but uh, we, are, we, are, we are having to cut back a little. I, I would say what I'm focusing more now on is in audio recordings. I'm taking time to actually work on a, on a full uh, studio album, which uh, I think we will have out in the next six months. I am not being forced to be creative because the big headache we have is that I cannot do... I cannot go on a location and have actors and extras because, again, I'm concerned about uh, the health aspects of these. So I, I am looking at uh, maybe one or two releases within the next two months. But now the, the challenge for me is how to do it. I may need to look at more original media so as to avoid it just being you know, a lyric video while not uh, you know, placing myself or my family at risk. So, we, we, we do have a couple of projects coming up, but yeah. for me, I'm taking ah, this time nice. to actually work on a so full-length album. So it's not all bad. It's not all bad. At least you're working on an album. Are you planning to work on your album, album right now? Were you planning uh, so to work on your album right now? Or is it just that you're taking advantage of the situation that is there? All right, so, oh goodness, I don't think I'm cutting that question. It's a bit of a noise back, right? I'm asking. Yeah. 
Were you planning to um, work on your album right now? Or is it that you're taking advantage of this quarantine and um, corona pandemic? Yeah, in fact, um, the, the, the interesting thing for this is that there was a couple of plans that I had. Um, I had already contracted a band. We were starting rehearsals, I think. Uh, the plan was to start beginning of April. Um, I had contracted the musicians. I was going back into the studio. Like I said, the plan for me was to have an album out within uh, 2020, and that was my goal. So, Ike Tunikame at an awkward time. Because if it had come a bit uh, earlier, it would have caught me mid project. So I would say the timing, in a way, it could have been better, but uh, I guess it couldn't have been worse. So what I'm doing now, I'm, I'm actually spending a bit more time uh, creating the concepts. I have uh, a producer that I'm working with who I've just contracted. So like I've said, in the next four or five months, we will have a full album out. And I guess uh, we should have the... By, by the time we put everything together, you know, the, the, the music, we're looking at the videos, we are looking at the accompanying and marketing and all that. So I would say that between now and let's say September and October, we'll have a finished project. But that's that's the way I'm looking at it. Because when, when you are forced to take a time to reflect, you can do one of two things. You can uh, panic or you can take that as a time to regroup and look at what you want to do. For me, something that I've been wanting to do for the last couple of years. How has the pandemic affected you and your family? You're a family man, right? How has it affected the situation in your household? Yes. Ah, man. Okay. In, in one way, like I said, if we look at it from the more obvious ways, I mean, like, like you're guessing when you're seeing me fighting with my guys here, we are, as parents, it's very... It's a very difficult time because you can imagine the kids have been home. I think uh, from the, they've lost like a month in the first term. We're not sure whether whether the second term is going to start as expected. So that in itself is worrying for us. The children uh, sometimes get bored because uh, again, you know, there is that uh, challenge in terms of uh, managing the normal life. And then I think about that when we look at more practical aspects. Um, Nobody is buying anything. A lot of things are not moving. A lot of people are being forced to stay home. So again, we are, we are dealing with another headache. There is the economic aspect. <laughs> We're broke now. Because um, a lot of these uh, uh, projects and initiatives that we were trying to roll out are a bit uh, stuck. But um, I would say one thing I've learned, and probably this is an important lesson. It, it always pays to have more than one hassle in your life. Because I, w I was actually talking to a good friend of mine the other day. You can imagine if I did not have the other things that I do, and at this point I was 100% reliant on uh, musical entertainment, and I starved. Because at this point, basically all entertainment opportunities are down short of royalties, I think. So for me, I would say it has affected me in one way. But uh, on the other way, at least I'm thankful and I'm lucky. I know not everybody is at that place, but I think I'm a bit lucky. But I've always balanced these uh, two sides of my life. So when this one is down, at least still in and Saidiya Kidogo. So I would say that is one thing which I would say I've learned and uh, probably I'll maintain for the rest of my life. All right. So what is that one hack? As you've been at home for the last maybe one or two months, what is that one hack that you have learned right now that could ease the situation for someone else who is at home if you have something? Or, no. is, or, or the, the track that I'm, I'm working asking, on. What is that one hack or maybe two hacks in your house, um, working from home, just anything, living with children? What is that one hack that you have learned that you didn't know before, but because of the situation, you have learned how to ease in that, ease in that situation right now? All right. I, I think, you know, for 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 me, uh, luckily, because for, for, for what I do for my other hustle, it's always been a bit, um, you see, the way we are living now, when we are having to, to deal with everything virtually, like we're doing now, virtual calls, virtual uh, meetings, virtual discussions. I, I think for me, it, it almost feels like I, I've been doing this already. Um, 
Work-wise, I've always been uh, in technology. I've been uh, doing business development for the last uh, 11 years. And uh, for, the, for the best part of that life, I have not been doing a lot of that business in Kenya. I've, I've managed uh, business, you know, Pan-African. I mean, south of uh, Egypt, north of South Africa. I've done this for a long time. So the, the way we are dealing now, where we are talking about virtual calls, virtual meetings, virtual all these things. I mean, I've been living this life for the last 10 years. So it hasn't really um, shocked me. I'm used to this. But I think the, the big change is, is, is in the way the world is now. I mean, like my kids the other day, so they are, they're having these virtual classes, which, you know, for them is something new. For me, I've been having virtual meetings for 10 years. It's, it's, it's not something that new. But I'd say that uh, the biggest win from all this, we are sort of being forced to get to know ourselves a little better. For those who have families, you're being forced to, you know, spend a little more time. Uh, and, you know, oh, this is something we, we sometimes take for granted. If you have the choice of going out and coming back, you know you can put uh, things on the back burner. But during this time, I think we're going to see a lot of uh, families becoming closer, people engaging better. And I think that is the biggest win for all of us. For me, I'd say definitely that's the biggest win, uh, spending more time with my family and all that. And I think, in spite of all the bad that is there, that is the one good thing that I'm actually seeing out of this thing, the closeness and the, and the engagement that I've had with my family and my kids. So as we wind up, I want you to tell us about your most recent song and um, tell us where people can find your music and subscribe and just share and listen to it. All right, good stuff. So, um, where can you find me? Uh, digitally, I'd say most of my time, you're either going to find me on uh, Facebook or uh, YouTube or uh, Instagram. I think that's where I'm most active. Um, just look for Muru Amziki. Muru Amziki. That's on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and, uh, and uh, YouTube. I keep that uh, Instagram very busy, Facebook is very busy, YouTube, like I've said, um, doing well. Uh, my, my last song out, I did like a quarter million views, which brings my total count, just a moment, which brings my total count to about 800,000 views. So again, like I've said, the visibility is growing. The visibility is growing. So, I mean, please uh, reach out, engage, contact me and all that. Like I've said, we're going to have an album out before the end of the year. So please keep it locked. For now, we're in the studio. So I think by the time this COVID thing uh, cools down, we will have uh, a full album out. Okay. So if right now um, right. the government declared that we are corona free and everything goes back to normal, what is that one place you'd run to immediately? Or oh, the one thing to look at when, when uh, the coronavirus situation ends? I, I think the coronavirus, you, you know, the coronavirus, uh, I, I think in some ways has accelerated how we are doing things. Like, for me, my plans were to keep doing singles, I think, for 2020 into 2021, maybe to do an album next year. But, you know, when you sit down and you actually think about it and you have time to think about it and you say, why next year, why not now? And I think that's how we're approaching a lot of our things. We are all learning that uh, time is of the essence. Uh, you can't put off everything until tomorrow or next year. So I think for me, the first thing I'm doing is, of course, within precautions, I am spending time in the studio. But the main project, really, I think, is uh, when the restrictions are lifted, when we're, when we're saying that it's a bit safer to do that, I am going to spend a lot more time in that studio and put all that out. I mean, that's been a goal, for, a goal of mine, and I, and I honestly cannot, cannot believe that I have a good reason to put it off. So as soon as the restrictions are lifted, I'm going to spend more time in that. Basically, we'll keep that music flowing. So thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Oh, good, great. Thank you.
Same yes, and Bye. that was Muro Music. Enjoy. So please, please, please head over to YouTube, um, Instagram, so subscribe to his music, um, listen to it, give your comments, and wait for the next project that he is putting up together for you. If